Oh, hey, what's happening, everybody? It's Brian House here for Housework, and today we are going to go over the true, real reason why I designed, built, and distributed plans for the Revolution 2x72 belt grinder. There's a couple of key components that I really wanted to go over, and there's some confusion about the design as to why certain things function the way they do, and the one, one true reason why I designed and built it. So, Going back about a year ago, I built a very standard, a very rudimentary 2x72 belt grinder. A lot of people have built that grinder. It was a, a design based off of Dan's design from DC Knives, and it was a fantastic tool. I loved it. I wanted to keep one in my shop. I wanted to build a second one, and I started uh, really diving deeper into bladesmithing and metalworking so that tool just really made a lot of sense to have however there were some limitations you couldn't turn it horizontally uh, to reverse the belt the tracking wasn't very good and i also had constructed designed and built a top platen some of you may have already seen that video about the top platen and if you haven't i'll put a card up in the corner so you can check that out but uh, that was designed so i could use a surface conditioning belt one like this this is um, this particular one's made by cling spore scotch bright makes one they're uh, a really a useful belt to have for finishes that you're not trying to get super shiny you're not trying to you know get a very very fine finish you can cover up a lot of sins with a surface conditioning belt and what I liked about it was I was able to uh, run my blades over the top of it and get my finishes just right the way I wanted them. However, because that belt sander would not reverse or track in reverse, I would run it forward and the blade uh, would be sometimes pointed at me and it could catch. And uh, I did have one instance where the blade did catch and uh, I took a knife into the apron that was a major safety concern now granted i wasn't hurt the the belt wasn't spinning real fast i felt like it was somewhat safe but i knew i was making mistakes i was getting careless and uh, i've heard stories of people who have uh, you know been seriously injured by doing stuff like that so i sat down and i designed the 2x72 grinder that you see right here uh, this is the revolution 2x72 it's all tube steel and plate steel easy to acquire stuff it isn't um, very complicated or hard to build. And I did it because I felt like if I could create something like this that would run forward and reverse in a true manner, meaning I could tune it up properly, give a nice floating uh, tracking mechanism on the top, I would reduce my risk when I'm actually doing work like that. So a lot of people have asked me, why do you run the belt in reverse? That makes no sense. Can't you just turn the blade around? And my response has always been to that question. Unless you've tried it, it's really hard to explain. But one of the key functionalities of being able to run the belt in reverse is to be able to sharpen your blades right here in this portion of the belt. And that's really, really handy. And, and any bladesmith that has this functionality will tell you the exact same thing. Now, when I first originally designed this, I knew that I had to have the drive wheel exactly at 90 degrees to the platen. And the only way that I could achieve that was by using plate steel that would run the whole length and attach to the receiver tubes that were going to be holding the platen. That made a ton of sense to me from an engineering standpoint. If this motor cannot move back and forth, then it is only really the job of truing up the platen where you get full uh you know you get a um, full use of 90 degrees from this plate so it's really tough to screw it up that's number one number two is that 90 degree angle is really important because when you go forward and reverse you shouldn't have to do a ton of tracking uh, adjustments you should be able to just go forward and backward and and it should just adjust itself and for the most part the revolution does that the other key component to this is that I designed and built a very large platen. This platen face is 11 inches uh, from top to bottom. The total platen height is 14 and a half, just a little bit over 14 and a half inches from top to bottom. And a lot of people have said, that just seems really extreme. It's really large. Most platens are eight inches at the most. 
And, and I agree, it is. But there's a really good reason for that. I don't have a top platen on here. I don't have a surface where I can run big blades across the top. This is more flexible. This is a, just a spot where you can do sharpening. So here's the true real reason. I made this 100% adjustable and you're able to turn this back and use this now, this surface, as your surface conditioning belt uh, area where you can run your blades like this back and forth. You can polish them. You have a much easier way. You can lay your blades flat like this. And this allows you to get these nice long runs on blades that you normally wouldn't have the ability to do. And uh, I don't see a lot of bladesmiths doing this, but I do see one major bladesmith doing this, the Blenheim Forge guys over in the UK. That's actually where I originally got the idea was they have a grinder dedicated to this functionality. It just lives in this position. It's actually even a little bit higher than this, but this will do the job. And when you look at their work, it really shows. It, you can get the blade to lay flat this way and you, your grind lines are going from tang to tip. To me, that's super important. So that's the whole point and the whole reason why I did this. And uh, I'll give you a demonstration so you can actually see how this functions. But I love the concept that I have a really large surface <clears throat> that I can now run the belt in reverse. It's safe. I can get my, my grind lines to go uh, lengthways, lengthwise. And this entire thing turns horizontal and goes in forward and backward. And it's there's not a lot of adjustment that's needed because it's all 90 degrees everything is in in play so let me give you a demonstration of how that works and you can see where i'm going with this okay so this is a piece of a2 tool steel uh, this is a common chef's knife that i make and it's been ground down now to about uh, 220 grit and then this was a vertical or a horizontal uh, clean up with a scotch bright belt like this or surface conditioning belt. Now what I'm going to demonstrate is um, running this along this platen and lengthwise so you can kind of see the difference in the finish. Okay, so now you can see that there is, uh, the, the grind lines are still there, the, the horizontal ones, so this needs a little bit more cleanup. This is what the other side looks like. This side was not touched, so you can kind of see a difference here. That's the side that had not been touched. You can see all the horizontal grind lines there. And then here's the side with the the full length grind lines and granted this isn't perfect you can you're going to need to go back and clean this up quite a bit maybe with some 100 grit or 220 
but it takes a lot of the hand sanding out of things as well. So if you're, if you hate hand sanding like I do, this solves a lot of that problem. Now I'm going to demonstrate just in its current setting, I'm not going to adjust the tracking, what it looks like to go. I was in reverse before. Now let's go into forward and see if it's a decent, see how the tracking is. Not perfect, needs to be slightly adjusted. Now it's right where it needs to be. So you can see with just slight modification of the tracking mechanism, I was able to go back and forth between the, the forward and reverse. Now let's just go ahead and loosen this and reset the machine for 90 degrees against the plate. Lock it down. And now we're ready to grind again. In my opinion, for a home-built grinder, that has a lot of amazing functionality to be able to go in forward reverse and turn itself horizontally and use like a top platen style um, uh, platen with just one tooling arm. I mean, that's pretty, uh, in my opinion, pretty helpful for any bladesmith. If you're interested, you can build this yourself. I do have plans available. I will put a link down in the description so you can find those plans. Uh, I think if you're in getting into bladesmithing, a 2x72 belt grinder, whether it's this one or another one, whatever it is, is a must. You probably should have one if you want to uh, do your best work. So Now I'm going to give a quick demonstration of how simple it is to sharpen a knife using a 2x72 belt grinder in reverse. This is a Norax 600 grit ceramic belt and we're gonna run it at about 30% and put an edge on this blade. All right, now that we've got our edge on, I'm going to use a strop. They make a leather strop for 2x72, super handy. Put some white compound on there. Grab some paper and give this thing a test. Laser sharp. Takes about five minutes or so. If you got something out of today's video, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button. And if you're not already subscribed, hit that subscribe button. And if you hit that little bell, you get a notification every time I upload something to YouTube. There are numerous ways to support my channel. There are links down below to my Patreon page, to my Teespring store, and to buy me a coffee. And all of those links will take you to places that can help support everything I've got going on right here in my workshop. We appreciate you. Thank you for watching. I hope you all are happy and healthy out there. I hope to see you on the next video. My name is Brian House, and this has been Housework. <music>